Oh, you know what? I want to circle back to. How the hell did you end up end up with Primer Fifty Five? You never told me a story. Um, basically, this is a funny story. My first solo record I was working on. I was trying to collect a lot of like the, my favorite artists to like do songs with me on there. So I had already the Rugged Man on there, Potluck, Critical Bill from Detroit, which they were signed to Tech Nine for a while. But uh, I, Justin Morales was working at the rave. He's like, "Hey, Primer Fifty Five is doing a show here. You should come in and you know say what's up to him and try to network." So I'm like, "Yeah." I was like, actually, I wouldn't mind getting Jason on a song. So <clears throat> I went to the show. You can tell Jason was having his issues and stuff like that. And uh, I talked to their manager. I'm like, hey, I'd like to do a song with Jason. They're like, okay, we'll, we'll talk about it. But um, they're like, um, I can't remember exactly how it came to be. I ended up talking to Bobby Burns, which me and Bobby have a strained relationship now, but whatever, it is what it is. Uh, he's like, hey, you rap? Are you like can you do other things besides rap? I'm like, yeah, I've been in a metal band my whole life. I was like, so I gave him a source CD and uh, I was like, just check it out. But I was like, I really, you know, you, me and Jason should write a song together. I was like, I'll, I'll hook you up with some money. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll make this legit. And uh, like a month later, he hit me up. He's like, Hey, Jason is not going to be in the band anymore. We're looking for a few people to try out. Would you be interested in trying out? I said, of course, you know? And uh, he's like, here's two songs. Get this done by this weekend. Let me hear what you did with them, and we're we're gonna, you know, make a decision. And the songs were like they weren't really Primer Fifty Five. I'm like, is he fucking with me? I, I don't know. But I was like, well, I'm gonna write to these two. I, I have those demos somewhere. I, I really gotta uncover those fuckers. Um, <clears throat> so I got the call. Like I sent him to him on like a Sunday, and on Monday he called me up. He's like, hey, do you wanna uh, join Primer Fifty Five? I'm like. Fuck yeah. He's like, okay, we're going on the road in three weeks. I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> so just so you learned all the songs. Yeah, I learned all weeks. the songs. Yeah. I had one practice with him. We went to, I went down to Atlanta. We had a rehearsal the day before the tour. And then I went out and toured with him. Half the songs. I mean, I knew about 80% of them, but I had to learn like 15 songs. And I'm like, I can't remember all the riffs and stuff like that. And I, I remember I would write notes on my hand for the first few shows. I'd be like, da 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 <laughs> <laughs> and the crazy thing, the, the other two guys that were in the band was me, Bobby Burns, and Billy Gray, and Frank Fonsieri. Frank was from Stuck Mojo, huge Atlanta band. Mm -hmm. But now Frank and Billy are in Fozzy with um, Chris Jericho. Jericho. Yeah, they're you know what? friends of mine. Oh, when they come back to town, I'm fucking pissed. I had to work. They were playing a show on a Wednesday uh, at Shank Hall, and I wanted to go to it so bad. I actually, in my like regular DJing at Silk, I yeah. play Fozzy all the fucking really? time. Yeah, I remember when um, was it? Do you want to start a war? Came out, and I remember Chris Jericho tried to describe it as like a dance track, and yeah. I was like, "That's not a dance track." I was like, "It's a fucking great fucking song." Yeah. Um, but yeah, they've done some amazing. If that's the new lineup mm -hmm. in the last probably four to six years, they've done amazing work with that band. Oh yeah, that's yeah. that's all them. Yeah. Um, it's it's Billy. Frank and um, Rich Ward from Stuck Mojo too. Okay. Yeah, Rich Ward is a phenomenal guitar, but Billy Gray is phenomenal. They have the greatest one-two punch, and it's, their guitar is sick. Yeah, if you're not, by the way, if if you're a, a rock metal fan, uh, and shit, if you're even a wrestling fan, Chris Jericho actually has some fucking pipes on him. He's mm -hmm. actually pretty talented. He uh, talk, him and Sebastian Bach keep talking shit to each other right now. What the <laughs> fuck? Not, I don't know. It's just some Twitter war or whatever. Dude, that's Sebastian Bach. I would shut the fuck up, dude. That guy, Sebastian Bach can sing like a motherfucker. That fucker was doing opera at one point, yeah, dude. Yep, yep. He's got some fucking pipes on him. But I'm like, seriously, though, Chris Jericho is fucking yoked. And he's, yeah. he's in his early 40s. Yeah. Yoked. And I'm like, you don't want a piece of that guy, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. He's got CTE. Yeah, I don't think Fozzie needs uh, a security guard because they. Rich Ward used to be fucking big as fuck too. And Frank, Frank the Tank, man, the drummer. <laughs> yeah, like those guys, those boys will fuck you up, dude. Of that, what is the fucking story that all the drummers got to be like the fucking crazy dude of the group? I just remember like Fink was nuts from yeah. uh, he did Reverend E yeah. and Sore. No, he was never in Sore. Okay, yeah. uh, Fink was nuts. Tony, Tony was like, certifiably insane. Certif I remember there was a time we were hanging out with him and someone started a fight with Tony. I think he broke a fucking glass mug over their head. Yeah, yeah. Were we in, was that Cuddy or was that South Milwaukee we were in? Fuck. I just remember like. We were, uh, Which Tony fight? There's been a million of them. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> like I remember at one point looking over to Tony, I was like, dude, I'm like, I fight a lot. I'm yeah. like, but you yeah, he, he fight a, a lot. He's a lunatic. 
Um, who else was another drummer that was fucking certifiable? Any drummer on the planet. Yeah, pretty much, dude. They're all fucking nuts, dude. Yeah. Neil Pert was the only one that was actually level. Yeah. <laughs> I always tell this joke. I always say, what What do you call a drummer who just lost his girlfriend? What? Homeless. <laughs> Every drummer gets so mad at me. I'm like, it's true. <laughs> like, you're right. 